Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Mr. Electron. And in this video, I'm going to teach you how to convert a dead car alternator into a permanent magnet generator. So this is the rotor, and this is the armature winding. Now the plan is to modify the rotor winding with neodymium magnets, and the armature brushes are all worn off. So it was already useless. So that's why I am modifying. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB to order upload Jobo files from your computer after checking the details and price on the next page save to cart and then check out securely also every customer will get dollar seven and dollar eight free engineering fee for SMT assembly orders so guys as you can see that uh, the top portion of this armature winding is clean but the lower portion is still pretty bad so uh, it can be cleaned only after I remove the base so let's proceed with that you can see that the cleaning has got a pretty good effect on the windings let's open it from below so guys here as you can see all the screws nuts and bolts have been removed and now the armature winding is out from the rectifier and at the base of the alternator you see yeah so guys as you can see that it is all greased up so the first thing is to clean it up okay okay so guys here as you can see that I cleaned it up as much as I could and now comes the part of the rotor you see it's much cleaner than before yeah so guys here what you see are uh, the five important parts of the alternator all have been opened and separated from each other so this is the top head that holds the shaft of the rotor this is the rotor these are the teeth slip rings bearings okay yeah bearings are working fine now this one is what holds the brushes you can see there are no brushes inside the brushes are completely worn off so I'm going to remove this since I'm going to make it a brushless generator this of course we all know is the armature winding and this is the back cover of this entire setup okay so guys as you can see that I have drilled holes on all the teeth of the rotor two holes on each teeth yeah the holes are perfect yeah the bearing is also nice now comes the part in which I'm going to mount the magnets according to the poles and then fix them with an adhesive okay so guys these are the neodymium magnets that I'm going to use to fix on these grooves so I'm going to use north north on this south south on this and then again north north on this and accordingly and then fix them with this bond sticky bond okay so first thing is to find out the poles if it is north or it is south so guys uh, the method is simple all you got to do is understand the magnetic field now this is north then the lower portion of it is going to be south and then this upper portion of this magnet is again going to be north so the upper one is north I'm going to place it like this yeah okay then again the same way for this one so north has been placed on north now comes the south okay so first I'm going to place north on north and then south south you see the magnets for the north have been already placed now comes the south so starting from this side south will be the opposite this side yeah this one is quite unfit I will have to increase the size of the hole here yeah 
so guys all the magnets have been placed on the rotor now it's time to place glue on them okay so guys here as you can see that i have evenly placed all the magnets now comes the part of placing adhesive so that they can stick in there properly okay so yeah but before i do that first i'm going to confirm that all the magnets are placed evenly and properly like this is north then this is south and again this is north so let's do that check first so guys checking that is simple all you need is another magnet set and one pole should repel and the other pole should attract okay attracting attracting repelling repelling attracting attracting repelling repelling attracting attracting repelling repelling attracting attracting repelling repelling so all the magnets are placed properly now it's time to place the glue on them okay okay so this process is complete now okay so guys let's place this inside and check if uh, there is no projection and it goes smoothly in yeah as you can see that it is going really smooth it fits so the first part is to place the head on the shaft here as you can see that uh, the shaft and the rotor has got in the head and it's working pretty smooth now comes and the base so this is the base and this is the armature winding so i'm going to choose this slot for the wires yeah let's choose this one and see if it fits yeah it fits good enough you see here it fits perfectly and now here goes this now i will have to hammer it so that it fixes really nice so let's do that okay so guys now it's time to place back the final long screws okay let's see if it is rotating freely or not yeah it's running okay okay so guys the placing and installation of the rotor the armature winding and the casing has completed and as you can see that it is running really smooth you see very smooth and the smoothness can be judged if i rotate it and then it continues to rotate you see smooth So guys now i'm going to measure the output voltage generated voltage and current of this alternator with the help of this multimeter so uh, yeah this is uh, the multimeter that i got from banggood's link to buy this will be provided in the description auto power on okay so at present it is at the voltage mode so let me show you one thing first here as you can see there are three terminals one two and this one smaller one is three so these three terminals are the three phases of this alternator but uh, since these multimeters have only two terminals and can measure only single phase ec so i will use only two of the three terminals provided here to just measure the phase voltage because uh, the voltage of the single phase is equivalent to the voltage of the three phase so guys taking any of the two wires two wires have been connected the middle one is left out let's rotate the shaft and see how much voltage i can get to be displayed over here okay so i'm going to start with the rope rotation testing so rope has been wound on the shaft now it's time to pull it you can see voltage being displayed because of the minor movement okay again for the maximum voltage i could achieve with hand rotation was around 1.6 volts now let's go a little further so guys it seems like uh, the measurement delay voltage display measurement delay is a little bit longer for this multimeter so i'm going to use uh, the traditional cheap multimeter yellow multimeter 
for testing the generators yeah pointing it towards 200 volts ac mode so guys thread has been wound meter has been connected pointing towards ac mode 200 volts keep watching the display screen as i pull the thread yeah you saw it generated around 5.5 volts ac let's go a little hard on it and see how much more i can generate Okay, the thread has been wound. Go! Six point three hand rotation voltage. Nice. Okay, so guys, uh, this is a car indicator bulb that I'm going to connect and test with this alternator being used as a generator. So guys, as you can see, the bulb has been connected. It's time to wound the thread. Okay. You can see that it is glowing. Now let's turn off the lights and see how much it is illuminating. Nice.